Welcome back. It is always a good day. When I wake up, I give thanks. And I know that today is a day that I am privileged to introduce you to a very interesting person. Um, I was very fortunate to meet this young lady on my other side of my business, which is kind of interesting because both of us have these two very distinctive personality sides. Um, my guest today has two different things that she's very, very passionate about. When I first met Carly, it was through the Sonic Coast. And the Sonic Coast is this wonderful streaming app that focuses on Michigan music. Um, and it's super fun. And I'm privileged to do middays on that app. So I met Carly because she is a musician and she's fantastic. And we play her songs on the Sonic Coast. But throughout my conversation with her about her musical background, I found out that she is not just a musician, but she is a nurse. She is a radiation specialist. Is that it, Carly? It's close. I'm a radiation therapist. I treat cancer with radiation and I take patients through uh, one of arguably one of the most difficult parts of their life, you know, getting that cancer diagnosis. And I help, you know, get them treated with radiation and be alongside them throughout their entire treatment course. Wow. Unbelievable. So Carly Davidson is my guest today. I kind of skipped ahead on that. Um, <laughs> CarlyDavidson.com is where you can find her and her music and everything. So Carly, how, how did you blend these two career paths? I mean, they're arguably very, very different. How did it yeah. come to be where you ended up, you know, you're performing, you're gigging, you're going on the road, you're doing shows as a musician, and then you turn around and you're working with people that are in very frightening situations with life or death. Um, that's a wonderful question. And to be truthful, I believe, you know, obviously we have two sides of our brain and growing up, I always had an affinity towards science and the human body and the medical field in general. Um, I was very fortunate enough to have, um, some guidance from a, a family member who turned me on to radiation therapy. And I fell in love with it from the moment that I first entered the clinic, being able to be, you know, the positive light that is in some one's day, um, again, while they're having a really rough patch and a rough go at things, has been a wonderful way for me to, um, you know, go through life and be able to gain a lot of perspective that I don't think I would have had the opportunity to have um, going forward. So there's two sides of your brain and the music side. I absolutely love being able to play music. I put out positive types of music to, you know, uplift people's spirits. And then I get to utilize the other half of my brain that is a complete nerd when it comes to science. And but at the same time, be able to help and feel like I'm doing a positive impact for the world by helping people in their time of need. So doing both of them absolutely fills my cup 1000%. Wow. It's just so intriguing to me. I mean, those are two very different polar opposites almost. Yes. Do you ever find that the music side blends into the radiation therapy side or vice versa? The radiation therapy side blends into the music side? Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of the times our patients when I'm working in the in the hospital in the healthcare field, they don't really want to talk about their cancer diagnosis. And so they want to be treated like a human again, because after you get your diagnosis, if there's someone listening who hasn't, um, you know, very gratefully has not had to deal with this. But once you get your diagnosis, it becomes your entire life. You know, you're a doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment. You're, at, you know, one you know type of treatment to the next and everybody for the lack of better term, treats you like an appointment time. And it becomes mm -hmm. this mundane thing. And um, so one thing that I have found that completely levels patients across the board is music. And when I was a very, very young child, I thought that I wanted to go into music therapy. And while looking, you know, mm -hmm. now I do that, I am able to kind of break the ice and talk to patients about something that we all love and that's music. And so we play music in the treatment rooms while they're getting treated. And it's something that I have found that even on my most 
anxious patient. If I can play a song that, by an artist they love, they completely calm down. And you see all of the balls of nerves that they have turned into for that day. They just can calm down. And so um, it's as of recently, I have been playing them my own music and it's been a wonderful response. And I absolutely love that because, of course, I want to see my growth you know, happen in my music career. But it means I'm doing something good if, you know, I'm putting out that positivity and it, I get it in return 100 percent. Oh, that's good. I, yeah. love that. I love that you're incorporating your own music into your daily life with your, you know, this radiation therapy, because um, it's so positive. I mean, your music really is. It's super uplifting. Uh, it just has a good vibe to it. You're a good songwriter. Um, so how fun is that? Would you ever consider being able to take your guitar in with you and actually play while you're in there? Or is that not something you would do? It's not something that I can feasibly do while working in the department. But I will say that before I started um, working in the hospital, I volunteered at a hospital and I brought my guitar and I played in all patient rooms. And those were some of the best memories I have of, you know, my growing career as a musician. That was a moment for me, a complete transitional period where I was young. I was 18, 19 years old and I was going into these rooms and imagine they put yourself in my shoes you're just a young little kid going in and knocking on a door of a complete stranger who has been stuck in the hospital for who knows how long and you're just a little girl with a guitar saying hey can I sing you a couple songs and of course I had a couple of people like no go away I'm not I don't want that but there was other moments where it was just beautiful transformational you know type of things I, I can recall one instance where um, there was a, a little child in the bed and her mom was like, yeah, she hasn't talked to any of us. She was nonverbal and she had a bunch of EKG leads on her head and they had just, you know, they were trying to figure out what was going on with her. And I asked if I could play her a song and the mom said yes. And so I started playing a tune that was popular back then and she started to sing. And we both looked at each, like I looked at the mom and the mom is just immediately crying. and. I just thought there's so much power to music. Let a, you know, it's not just me that's feeling this. Like this was this was something big. And from that moment on, I just know that music has a, a way to heal people. Oh, I could not agree more. I yeah. absolutely believe that. I feel that uh, it it just it can invoke so much within us. I mean, you know, when we're grieving. It's good to oh, listen. So good. Yeah, it's good. You know, I create different playlists depending on what I need or if someone crosses over um, to the next room, as I like to call it, um, I create playlists for people, you know, with specifically with them in mind. And then when I'm missing them, I play their soundtracks. I'm looking at my mom and dad right now. I just played dad yesterday. I was like really missing him. So I'm like, all right, all right, Siri, play dad. Um what about the the radiation side of it and being involved with so much um, pain and and death and being around that? How were you able to kind of deal with that? Like, how do you how do you figure that all out? Like, isn't it make you super sad to be around this all the time? It has the opportunity to absolutely. Um, I think that one of my strongest traits is to, and sometimes it could be a flaw, right? But is to try to look on the bright side. I mean, at the end of the day, you woke up, you're here. And, you know, I try to approach all of those situations with a smile and go forward. Now, that doesn't mean that this job isn't heavy because it is, it really does. And there are moments where I even find myself, you know, feeling that like, wow, that was a really heavy moment, but it has taught me to be more grateful. It has taught me to be more present. Um, it's, it's really a godsend to me to have all of this, um, 
you know, prior this knowledge now that I don't think I would have had before. I, I truly do try to live in the moment because you don't know what's going to happen next and uh, no one's guaranteed tomorrow. So it's it's really given me a lot of perspective. Um, every patient that I have, they truly do turn into a friend by the time they're done with the course of treatment. Because of course, these radiation treatments, you might get one or you might get 35 of them. And so when you get 35, that's seven weeks of you coming in every single day. And I'm going to ask something about you. And again, I don't like to just talk about your cancer. I want to know what you did for a living and, and uh, what makes you tick and what how how you got there. And everybody has a story. So that's what I lean in on in trying to make patients not feel like patients. I want them to feel like people because they are people. And I want to, you know, spread a positive type of vibe to them. So I, and I can think of a patient I just treated today who she told me, you know, I dreaded coming here, but I met you. And now I, I look forward to coming in just to say hi to you, even if it is only for 15 minutes a day. And that makes me feel good because even though, yes, we are treating her cancer, um, I know that I'm uplifting someone's day. And as heavy as it might be on days, I just strap my shoes on and know that, you know, this whole life is temporary. And I have an opportunity and I'm privileged enough to be in a position to where I can make someone's day and I'm alive and, and well to do it. So I'm going to do it. Boy, you <laughs> are <a> not- <laughs> very wise. No, you are so wise. And you're still, you were like, when I was young, I'm like, okay, you're still very young. Um, <laughs> I love that you are not making it about the dis-ease. I love that you are seeing them as a human being uh, having this life experience. And, you know, all of us at some point, there's ups, there's downs, there's in between. Sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it's joy, you know, joyous. Um, But we all kind of have to go through whatever that is. So not to attach to that cancer and really see them as an individual is really beautiful. Like just you telling me that story about that lady, you you know, you're making her day, you know, you're just being present and being in the moment is making her feel better. Wow. Okay. So where did the wisdom come from? You know, was your mom wise? Was your dad wise? Was it Yoda? Was it a grandparent? Where did this come from? And has it developed Or have you noticed it and said, wow, you know, I'm really starting to have these deep thoughts as a very young individual? Um, Honestly, it started when I I was in school for this career. I worked uh, alongside and and underneath several other therapists who taught me, and they were able to open my eyes to the bigger picture. And when I started seeing, of course, we do our you know daily verification process every day where we ask the patient their name and birth date. And when I started, because you know, we most often assume that cancer is an old old generation disease and an old person's thing. Uh, when I started seeing patients who were my age and hearing my birth year come out of their mouths and or younger, um, I worked on a, a department that treated a lot of pediatrics. Um, I started really counting my blessings. Like, wow, this this individual is my age or younger, and they're dealing with so 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 much. And I am so blessed to be able to, you know, clock in and clock out, go home and do whatever it is on the on you know under the sun that I want to do, and I don't have these things to think about. Um, and then, you know, you're talking to patients about their life. And of course, I, you know, talk to them about what I'm going and going through and doing. And I mentioned my music and I mentioned we, that we live in a school bus and we travel the country. And they, every single one of them has said, you are doing it right. You are living out every person's dream of just, you know, going for whatever it is that they want and achieving those things and not waiting until they're older. Um, I think it was actually my grandfather who's since then um, gone on to the next room who said, I'm proud of you kid for going out and doing it and, you know, seeing something and then achieving it. And so um, it's just, it's just kind of a mentality and a mantra now that I do, I, I really try to follow. Wow. Yeah, you're you're inspirational. That's um that's a really great place to come from. Um and getting that when you are a younger human being, uh, 
what a gift, you know, that you're not struggling, that you're not, you're just like, you're waking up and you're like, okay, I got a new day. What am I going to do with it? Um, how do you feel about death? Um, you know, this show, we deal with every aspect. You know, I talk to uh, green burials. I talk about cultural traditions. We talk about the afterlife. Um, you name it, anything, hospice care. Um, how do you personally feel about the transition of being alive and then not being alive, at least in this form? And I feel like when it's my time, it's my time. I, of course, work in the medical field and some might assume that I want to have every single avenue you know, available to me to keep me going. But truthfully, I am living my life so present or at least trying to live my life in a way that is so present that I'm okay with it. Of course, it's always going to be sad. And I have a lot of family members that have since passed. And, you know, you do think of them and you have these moments of emotions that you think, wow, like I really do miss that person. But you have to celebrate that life. And if you're living your life while you're alive and you are taking every moment to do everything it is that you want to do and have no regrets, then it's a time for you to just peacefully pass on. Um, I'm, I, I had the conversation with my wife, do not put me on any sort of, you know, long life saving measures. If I can't do the things that I love and hug the people I love and be the person that, you know, I want to be, you know, if it's my time, it's my time. You know, I'm a firm believer in hospice. Just, you know, make sure I'm not in pain and just let me go. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's a tough subject, but I think that life is beautiful and so is death. Right. Yeah, it's just a part of it, I believe. And uh, I think when we really do embrace that and not have it be this big, scary thing in the room, um, it allows us to live a, a much richer life, you know, when we're like, okay, this is this is a gift. Every moment we have is a gift. Every interaction we have with other human beings is a gift. And so, um, and good for you. Uh, you know, we have the whole thing set up too with the DNR. I, I always tease my kids. I'm like, you know, because for us, death is dinner conversation, right? And they're like, oh God, here <laughs> goes mom again you know she's talking about death and i'm like no i, I want to live until it's it's my time to uh transition um mm -hmm. to whatever is next uh i like to think that we go on and on and on and it's and that's just me that's my personal opinion that we're here and then we're there but exactly. that we're still very present in that moment um do you get super attached to any of your clients Yes, there are a couple that have just really tugged at my heartstrings and um, it's almost as if I know them from a past life or something or they've really struck a chord with me in ways and um there are a couple where I keep in touch all of our, not all of them, but a lot of our patients will gift us things at the end. It's kind of just a societal way of thanking people, whether it's a, you know, a tray of cookies or I've had patients bring me in necklaces and bracelets and all sorts of things. And I keep all of those things. I can't, there's absolutely no way I could ever discard any of them. It's it's a piece of our history together. And I just feel so blessed that I was given those things. And so um, there are a couple, there are a few. Yeah. So do you move around with this radiation therapy? Do you go to different hospitals, different places, or are you stationary? Um, no, I am a traveling radiation therapist. So similar okay. how your medical nurses work, I sign contracts with hospitals for uh, anywhere from you know three months or six months, however many months that contract ends up being. And I show up and I do my best. And um, I, I absolutely love it that way. Honestly, my mantra for the last year has been balance, find balance. Um, and so that has been an 
incredible way for me to do that. I have been working at this hospital since the uh, beginning of December. And so I have about a month left before I my contract is up and I will be taking some time off and then I will be touring the country for the summer and playing music. So finding that balance and being able to do those things, it again helps with how heavy this career is um, because you know it is heavy like we talked earlier too having that time off has given me a moment to be rejuvenated and then go out and do the things that I say I'm going to do, you know? Right. And so I enjoy it. Wow. That's so cool. Where are you going on your tour this summer? This summer, we start out in um, Indiana, okay. Muncie, Indiana. We'll go up through Wisconsin. I will make a lot of stops up in the North woods of Wisconsin, Arbor Vita, um, Minocqua area. And then at tail end of the summer, we were coming back through Michigan. So we will we'll be dropping some dates soon um, out in the metropolitan area around Detroit and then come back to about Cincinnati, Ohio at the uh, middle of October-ish. So how yeah. cool. A Midwest wow. tour. I love it. Now, does have you ever pulled from the nursing radiation therapy side for lyrics? for a song i'm working on a song right now that is very very driven towards it um and and not in a sad way but just trying to um you know how do i say just encapsulate that world a little bit more i think that i have these two careers and as much as they're po it's positive music and radiation kind of stays in this lane they've never really crossed yet um, and I think I want to bring my music following into my world of radiation therapy and try to, you know, bridge that gap a little bit. So there is a song in the works working on it. And uh, I'm very excited to see the response. Yeah, the word yet, when you said you hadn't done that, I just heard yet, because um, I see it. I totally see you being able to take these two sides of your brain, as you put it, and you've merged your life and you are finally, you know, you're finding this balance by playing the music, but then doing this other part of your, your life that you love by being in service and helping individuals that are, you know, having a very difficult time. And I don't know why, but I just, I see that so clearly. I see that blending so flawlessly. Um, and, and not so it's murky or weird at all, just kind of like a natural progression of Carly Davidson. Wow, you are so impressive. I was really excited when I first talked to you on the Sonic Coast and we were music, 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 music. And I was like, la, 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 la. And then you dropped in that you were this, you know, radiation therapist. And I'm like, huh? I got to <laughs> have her on the next room, you know? So I'm glad yeah. that you finally you know, took the time. I know you're busy. I know you, you know, you're working Monday through Friday, you're busting your butt, uh, trying to help people feel better. And so I really appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything that we have not touched on? First of all, what's your grandfather's name? The one that told you, you got it going on, kid. Guy. Guy. guy yeah. Right on Maybe. guy. I, I like it. Yeah, that's that's good. That's a good grandfather thing to say. That's just brilliant, you know, for him to back you so lovingly and say oh. that to you like you got it going on. That's that's beautiful. Um, I keep his picture above the driver's seat everywhere I go. He's there. It's yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Oh, you know, since you mentioned it, let's talk about this bus. Let's what? talk about the bus, your dogs, your wife. You're traveling around the country and you're gigging. And I've I've told everybody on the Sonic Coast, I'm like, oh my gosh, follow her on social media because you make me smile. You make me smile. When you were running in the rain to get to your car the other day, I was just cracking up because you were like, okay, here we go. And you had the hood up and you were getting pelted <laughs> with this rain. But you had Gotta fun with the eyeball. <laughs> yeah, you had fun with it. You had fun with it. Talk yes. to me about that. Talk to me about your life in the bus and what's, you know, what's coming up next with that. And, uh, and then if we didn't touch on something that you would like to get across, I'd like to give you the floor. 
All right. Um, well, I am married with three dogs and we are going on our sixth, sixth year of marriage. And in six years ago, we decided um, we were going to leave our traditional sticks and bricks home and we were going to embark on a journey that um, I really truthfully did not know where it was going to go. I knew that upon going to school full time for radiation therapy, working, we were both working um, and building out this RV, we had initially thought maybe, you know, a couple of months, we'll just see kind of where it lasts and where it goes from here. Um, we took six months in the end of 2018 and we just kind of fell in love with it. It's been an incredible journey ever since. I took a school bus, I turned it into an RV and it's a glorified apartment on wheels, if you will, honestly. It's one of those things where um, it's it's so finely tuned to our specifications and our needs. Um, like I said, three dogs. I have a boxer collie mix and two chihuahuas. So it's a true motley crew in our family. Um, and it's been just a wonderful experience to be able to travel the country, have our home with us, especially when I'm taking these travel contracts. That's the biggest thing that a lot of travel um, personnel, travel nurses, travel therapists, um, that they have a trouble, you know, trouble with is that you have to stay in your Airbnbs or uh, long term hotels or such like it's so not personable and I'm very grateful to be able to have my home with me and take everything I need. You know, there's no pack in a duffel bag for me. It's, it's my whole home. Now that does bring a whole list of challenges with it. However, it's it, the good outweighs the bad. You know, I take it slow. I get to experience the country. I've driven West coast to East coast now several times and this this country is beautiful. If you have not gotten the chance to do such a road trip, do it. You will not regret it. Um, I've stuck my head out the window and, and breathed in the beautiful air as I've gone down the road. And, you know, I've seen the, the colors change from green to brown and, and brown to green. So I, I really have enjoyed the ability to have that. You know, they say home is where the heart is. And our kind of fun spin on it is home is where you park it. So I um I'm very grateful to be able to do that. My wife is um very blessed to be able to, you know, stay home with the the dogs and kind of keep a homestay. She does everything for me when it comes to my social media. I mean, um I could not be the woman that I am in the positive light that I am without the help of her. She truly is everything to me. We've been together for 10 years, married for 6, um and it's it's really remarkable how she's been able to step in and just accentuate my life in such a beautiful way. Um, so she she does everything. I mean, there's nothing that that woman doesn't do. She's probably crocheting me a handmade shirt right now. To be <laughs> honest with you, she's so she's artistic, but she she steps in every time. I mean, we just released a new uh, song single on uh, on all the streaming platforms, "Fallen for You," the earlier this month. And we had a wild hair one day. We said, we want to record a music video. So she said, let's go record a music video. And so that's the kind of energy and kind of love that I, you know, I desperately absolutely love from her. So yeah, she's, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, social media manager, analyst. She helps me with everything from, uh, you know, my, where I'm going to wear clothing, everything, makeup, She's 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 the egg girl for sure. So wow. we've got it. We've got it all worked out. So I'm very grateful. You got it going on, Carly Davidson. You got I it do. going on. I'm very, very grateful. Yeah. And I was so happy. Falling for you is a great song. So <laughs> if, if you're listening right now, um, we've got 18 countries now that are downloading the podcast. Um, do yourself a favor. Head to CarlyDavidson.com support this young lady, stream her music, buy her merchandise, follow her journey in the bus with the wife, with the three dogs, and uh, really support her. And if you're in Wisconsin or you're in Indianapolis or Michigan and she's posting where she's playing, the best thing you can do for a live musician is get out and just Come give them the love, right? Right? Yep. Give, I love give them that. Yep. Give them the love. So uh, in closing, any final thoughts or words that you want to share with me? I just, I've loved every second of this interview because you just light it up, man. It's, um, 
I, I wish more individuals could feel this vibe that you're that you've got going on and i think they will by listening um final thoughts carly just be kind to one another just be a moment you know take a moment out of your day to spread some kindness you know spread some love and smile you're alive you're here and today's going to be a good day ah you hit me right where it matters i am all about kindness so I so appreciate you taking the time. CarlyDavidson.com is Carly's my guest today. Thank you, Carly, for taking the time to be on The Next Room and, and for answering some really difficult questions. Sometimes uh, people do not want to uh, answer the question about death, right? They're like, ah, you know, just because you talk about it doesn't mean it's going to happen. So um, I appreciate you being here. Thanks again. And uh, CarlyDavidson.com, go support this young woman. Please buy her music and follow her journey. I think you will be really happy. And you'll email me and say, boy, Jane, you were right. She's lighting it up. So thanks again Thank for so listening. For having me. I Thank appreciate you. you, on. You bet. Thank, Thank you, you for so listening. Much. You're so welcome. Thanks for listening to The Next Room. I'll be back next week. I'm trying to think who's coming on next week. I've got two shows booked that I have. Oh, I know. Jesse Bresendine is going to be on. Jesse is pure light and love from Santa Barbara. He is a motivational speaker. He's done a TED Talk. And talk about kindness. Jesse is lovely. So please join me next Monday for Jesse Bresendine as well. Okay. Thanks for listening. <laughs>